So a disclaimer, it's like, you know how sometimes before TV, like TV shows and stuff, it'll be like, oh, this is for 13 and older. Or if you're sensitive to blah, 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 then don't watch this. That's what a disclaimer is. Mia, why are you drinking coffee, girlfriend? You're going to be short. Okay. What I was really going to say is today, if you are in my homeroom class, so if you are in my homeroom, you have already gotten an email if you have any late assignments. If you did not get an email from me in my homeroom, then you don't have any late assignments. If you're in my reading RTI class and you have late assignments, I gave you, um, I sent you an email as well. After reading class, I'll be finishing the rest of late assignments for Mrs. Jones's and Mrs. Siddig's class. So be on the lookout. If you have any late assignments for me, you will be getting an email about it today. If you do not get an email from me, guess what? You don't have any late assignments, okay? But be on the lookout in your email. If you have any late assignments from me, you will be getting an email today before the end of the day, okay? For real. I mean it. And I want those done, okay? It'd be great. All of you need to get your work done today that we don't have to worry about it over Thanksgiving, right? No one wants to be worrying about stuff over break. So just get your work done today. That's what the day's for, okay? Okay. So I enjoyed our game that we played yesterday, and I thought it was a good review game. So I found another one, but this one's animal-themed. So we're going to be doing the same thing except for animal-themed. So right now I need you all to find my screen that has the cards on it, Okay. So go to the people on the upper right-hand corner, find Abigail Kneifel, and then pick them until you find the one with the cards. Of course, they're out of order. Why are they out of order? Okay. So find the one with the cards, okay? Mrs. Kneifel's going to do the same thing. I'm going to pin my own screen, too, so... Pin. Into screen. Oh, that's the wrong one. I'm going to pin this one. Okay. So pin my screen. That way you can read the cards as well. I want you to keep a total of how many you get right slash, yeah, how many you get right. Okay. So it's the same thing. There's author's purpose. There's inferences. There's genre today. We didn't have genre yesterday. Main idea, details, all those fun things. But we're going to get more practice on all these things that we have already learned this year. Now we're going to put them into practice. There's 24 again, just like there was yesterday. Same thing as before. If you want to answer, either raise your hand on the screen or raise your hand with the raise your hand function. Do not type the answer in the chat, okay? I want everyone to have a chance to answer. It's not fair if we're typing it in the chat and um, other people don't get a chance to answer, okay? So do not, Mia, you are cracking me up. Do not put it in the chat, okay? If you want to answer, raise your hand or raise the um, raise your hand feature, you know, the little, you know, raise your hand little guy. And I will call on random people. I may, not, I may call on you even though your hand's not up. Everyone needs to be participating, okay? So the first one is author's purpose. Is it to inform, persuade, or entertain? And like I said, these are all animal themed just because I thought that'd be fun. So Jim... The Wonder Dog was born in 1925 and quickly became famous. He seemed to have supernatural powers. Jim predicted who would win elections, which horse would win the Kentucky Derby, and which team would win the World Series for many years in a row. What is the purpose of this selection? A. To persuade readers to teach dog fancy tricks. B, to inform readers about a real and famous dog. C, to entertain with a story about a fictional dog. D, to inform readers about famous sports events. Now is the time. If you would like to answer, have your hand up or you can raise it in the chat as well. This one's a little bit trickier in my opinion. We're starting it off a little bit harder. Um, Michaela Freeze, ma'am, you may unmute yourself and tell us what you think. Entertain. I am going to disagree because it's giving us an actual date. He was born in 1925, so this isn't about a fictional dog. Jacqueline, don't post it in my chat, ma'am. Um, who else has their hand up? Dylan Kelly, you want to answer it for me? Is it B, to inform readers about a real and famous dog? 
Yes, because he we're telling them the actual birth date, so we know it's a real dog, and they're telling us about it, but they're not persuading us to do anything, and it's not a, I mean, it could be entertaining, but it's not meant to be entertaining. So the correct answer is B. So if you had B as your guest, give yourself a tally mark. If you didn't have B, no big deal. We have a lot more to go, okay? You had B, give yourself a tally. Next is cause and effect, which we worked on a ton last week. This happened because this happened. Pigs have an excellent sense of smell. As a result, some field hunters actually use pigs instead of pointer dogs. Other people used figs to find clams at the beach. In France, pigs are used to sniff out and taste fungi. No, sorry. Pigs are used to sniff out a tasty fungus called a truffle. You ever have like truffle oil fries or something? I have not had them, but they're apparently really good. Those truffle truffles are really expensive. So. Oh, Mrs. Kneifel, I went to LA and I had those. They were, they fried them in duck fat. They are so good. <laughs> Why are pigs used to find truffles? A, pigs will eat anything. B, pigs enjoy going to the beach. C, pigs have a great sense of smell. Or D, pigs are smarter than dogs. Why are pigs used to find truffles? I'm going to give you just a second to think about it, and then I'm going to call on someone. Um, Hannah Drubert, would you like to answer, ma'am? C. The correct answer is C. C is pigs have a great sense of smell. Pigs have a great sense of smell, which leads them to having, which help, blah, 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 which allows people to use them to hunt truffles, truffle fungus or whatever. So cause, pigs have a great sense of smell, effect, they can hunt truffle mushrooms, okay? If you had C, give yourself a tally. If you didn't have C, that's okay. Now you know why it is C. Next one is character traits. Remember, this is going to be a character's personality, how they're feeling in a certain situation, et cetera, et cetera. A newborn horse is called a foal. Foals have very long and wobbly legs, but they can stand up as soon after being born. Loud noises are likely to send them hiding behind their mothers. A foal will walk up to a person one small step at a time. Which word best describes a foal behavior? A, daring, B, courageous, C, timid, or D, stubborn? Which of these words describes a fool's behavior? I'm going to give you just one or two more seconds to think about it. Addison Boot Check, would you like to answer, ma'am? Um, is it C, timid? It is C, timid. Timid kind of means nervous or scared, maybe a little bit shaky. So if loud noises send them running and they will only come up to you tiny, tiny steps at a time, they're probably a little bit nervous. And another word for nervous would be timid. So if you chose C, timid as your answer, give yourself a tally mark. Go you. Ooh, next one's about farm animals. All right. Compare and contrast. Remember, if we're comparing something, it's how they're alike. It's contrasting how they're different. Both pigs and goats are curious animals. They also provide food for humans. Farmers raise pigs to get pork, bacon, ham, and lard. Farmers mainly raise goats for milk. Most people in the world drink goat's milk. Wait, more people in the world drink goat's milk than any other kind of milk. That's a fun fact, Miss Clamp, I didn't really know that. How are pigs and goats alike? I repeat that, alike, meaning we're comparing them. A, they both provide bacon. B, they both provide milk. C, they both like to eat weird things. Or D, they both provide food for people to eat. We should not be answering it. And D, B is wrong. They do not provide, pigs do not provide milk, Isaac. Haley Summers, answer for me, love. D. It is D. They both provide food for people to eat. Um, goats do not have bacon, so it can't be A. 
you cannot milk a pig for humans at least like pigs can produce milk for like piglings like they're little babies but um because they're mammals but we cannot we don't drink pig's milk so it wouldn't be that they may like to eat weird things but it wasn't in the thing anywhere so it is definitely d they both provide foods for people to eat if you had d give yourself a tally Next, fact and opinion. We didn't have one of these yesterday. Remember, a fact is something that is we are known to be true. An opinion, not all people drink cow's milk, Evan. That's what I was saying. So all around the world, just if you take the entire world, Evan, like people, more people drink goat milk than they do cow's milk. Just in the United States, a lot of people drink cow's milk. Goats take up less space. Probably why, okay, Evan, I'm just explaining, okay? Don't say whatever. That's not very polite. I was just explaining. You're the one commenting. All right. So fact and opinion. We know what those things are. Dun, 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 dun. We didn't have one of these yesterday. So focus, focus, focus. Dogs often do work for people. They are used for hunting and herding. Some dogs are trained in special ways to help lead the blind. There are also dogs on police forces. They use their sense of smell to find drugs or bombs. Dogs are great at being helpful. Which sentence from the text is an opinion? Which one is an opinion? A, they are used for hunting and herding. B, dogs are great at being helpful. C, there are dogs on the police force. D, dogs often do work for people. Which one of those is an opinion? Rochelle, which one of those is an opinion? B? It is B. Dogs are great at being helpful. Maybe I don't think that. I do think that, but I, that is the only opinion one. Some dogs are used for hunting and herding. So number A is a fact. C, dogs are on the police force. We know there's police dogs. That's a fact. Dogs are often do work for people. That is also a fact. So B is our only option for opinion. This camera makes my fingers look funny. Next one's genre. We didn't have a genre yesterday. Dun, 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 dun. All right. Africanized honeybees are also known as killer bees. They were first taken from Africa to South America to be studied. They escaped to other parts of the world. Killer bees are much more aggressive than other bees. When they fly, they will fly longer distances to defend their hives. Which identifies this paragraph as nonfiction? Which sentence makes us know this is a nonfiction paragraph? A, the text gives information about killer bees. B, bees do not defend their hives in real life. C, the text contains several scientific opinions. Or D, killer bees are fictional characters. Which one of these sentences lets us know this is a nonfiction text? Miss. Presley Marshall, tell me what you think, ma'am. Presley Marshall. A. It is A. I agree with that. The text gives us information, factual information about killer bees themselves. Nonfiction means real, factual. So A is our option. If you guessed A, please give yourself a tally. Remember, you should be keeping track of your points. Inferences. Mrs. Kleinfeld likes inferences. Remember, you have to take the information you're given and... Kind of come up with a conclusion or a prediction, et cetera, et cetera. All right. Juan's parents made a promise. If he behaved and made several good grades at school, he could adopt a dog from the animal shelter. Juan eagerly brought home his report card. He'd made the honor roll. He'd also won a good citizen award. Dad picked up his car keys and told Juan to hurry what will most likely happen next? What's going to happen next in the story? A, Juan and his dad are going to go to the pet store. B, Juan will go to the animal shelter with his dad. C, Juan will be taken to get a treat. Or D, Juan will get a driving lesson. What is going to happen next in our story? Based off what we read, what is going to happen next? Corgan, what is going to happen next?
recorded. Corgan, going once, going twice. Okay, I'm picking someone else. Uh, Paisley, you haven't gone. Paisley, what do you think? I think it's going to be B. It is going to be B because, remember, if he got good grades and behaved well, he was going to go to an animal shelter to get a dog, not a pet store. So it should be B. If you guessed B, good job. Give yourself a tally mark. That was a good inference question. I like that one. Next is main idea. And from yesterday, main idea is what we had the most struggle on. So remember, be thinking of the whole entire paragraph, okay? Sorry, this is quite funny. The yard real quick. Camels have special adaptations that help them survive hot desert conditions. That just means special things about them that help them survive. They can go for long periods of time without drinking water. They store fat in their humps. The water they drink lasts a long time because they do not sweat until they reach a high body temperature. Which sentence best expresses the main idea? A, camels in deserts have high temperatures. B, camels store water in their humps. C, camels are the only animals who never sweat. Or D, camels have adaptations for desert survival. James, do you have a guess, sir? James Lackney, do you have a guess? I think it's C. All right, I'm going to disagree with you because it says that camels will don't sweat until they reach high body temperatures, meaning they don't sweat like often, but they will sweat. And Sorry, I meant D. Okay, yeah, so it is D. Camel, camels have adaptations for desert survival. This whole thing was the special things that camels have to survive. So the main idea was about camels' special adaptation. So you should have chose D. If you chose D, give yourself a tally mark. If you didn't choose D, that's okay. Now you know why it is D. Like I said, main idea is kind of the harder ones. Ooh, point of view. Dun, 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 dun. Point of view. I was now beginning to grow handsome. My coat had grown fine and soft and was bright black. I had one white foot and a pretty white star on my forehead. My master would not sell me until I was four years old. He said colts should not work like horses until they were quite grown up. Who is the narrator from the text Black Beauty? So who is telling our story here? A character in the story, A. B, a character outside the story. C, the man who owns a black horse. Or D, the master of the house. Who is telling the story here? Mark, who's telling the story here? A. It is A. It's a character from the story. Like the horse is the one saying it and he's in the story. So you should have chose A. If you do not choose A, that's okay. If you didn't choose A, give yourself a tally. Ooh, we're moving on to number 10. Number 10. We are moving right along, friend. Supporting details this time. Cows eat six hours a day. They take in about 100 pounds of grass, hay, and grain. They also chew cud or little balls of partly digested food that have been burped up. A cow can chew cud for hours. Once cud is swallowed again, it is completely digested. Gross. Anyways, what happens after cud is swallowed a second time? A, it is burped up by a cow to be chewed for hours. B, it is completely digested. C, it is turned into little balls of partly digested food. Or D, it is used by a cow in place of grass and hay. What happens after cud is swallowed a second time? Um, Bryden Weaver, what do you think, buddy? Um, uh, it be, I think. Yes, once the cut is filed again, it is completely digested. You are correct. Yes, the answer is 
Yes. Can you please slow down? I couldn't see the answers that time, so I couldn't answer that. Okay, I'll slow down. All okay. Right. Text structure. How is something set up? Okay. Is it, you know, to compare and contrast? Is it um, sequence of events? How is something set up? It takes a hen about one day to make an egg. First, the yellow yolk is wrapped in the white part. This takes three hours. Then the hen makes the shell. This takes 20 hours. Finally, the hen lays the egg when the shell is finished. How does the author organize this paragraph? A, by describing how a hen's, hen's egg looks like. B, by comparing and contrasting yolks and shells. C, by telling what happens after the hen lays an egg. Or D, by telling how a hen lays an egg in sequential order. How is this whole thing set up? Gage, what do you think, buddy? Gage. D. It is D. This is told in sequential order. First, the yolk is made. Then it's wrapped in the white part. Then it's made into, then the shell gets on it, and then it's laid. So this was sequential order. Good job. If you guessed D, give yourself a tally mark. Landon, why does it matter how many cards are left? We are on our meet until 1025, bud. Word meaning. And there's 24 all together and we're on 12, which means we are halfway done almost. Word meaning, context clues coming your way, friends. It is a very serious thing if a person is bitten by a dog with rabies. Rabies causes the body to make too much saliva. A person starts to drool and have fits. After that, it's possible to become paralyzed or unable to move. What does the underlying word mean? The underlying word is paralyzed. So does paralyzed mean too serious? B, having too much saliva. C, able to have fits. Or D, not able to move one arms or legs. Angelina, what do you think? D, not able to move one's arms or legs. Perfect. Literally, if you use context clues after paralyzed, comma, or unable to move, it kind of gives the answer away right there. So the correct answer is D. If you had D as your guess, give yourself a tally mark. We're halfway done now. Good job, friends. Woo! Author's purpose. Dun, da, da, da. In the elephant world, the females stay together with their families their whole lives. They form very close bonds. The oldest one is usually the leader of the herd. Grandmother, sister, aunt, and cousins all help a new mother raise her calf. So a baby elephant's called the calf, fun fact. What is most likely the reason this text was written? A, to inform readers about elephant herd life. B, to inform readers about an elephant tail. Tail as in T-A-L-E, like a story, not T-A-I-L, like the body part. C, to share an opinion about new elephant mothers. Or D, to explain how elephants are different from cows. In my opinion, only one of these makes sense. Jaden Couture, tell me, bud, what do you think? A. It is definitely A. This is informational about elephant herd life and the female elephants, okay? It is not entertaining about a story. It's not necessarily about elephant new mothers, and there's nothing about cows. So the only answer is A. If you had A, give yourself a tally mark. Next, cause and effect. We should be super good at these now. Spring is a time of the year when many baby birds are hatched. It is easy for a nest filled with young birds to get blown out of a tree. When this happens, it is fine to gently put the nest back in the tree. It is not true that mother birds will reject their babies if humans have touched them. Why is it fine to put fallen baby birds back in a nest? A, birds, expect, birds experts say it is fine if you are gentle. B, the mother birds won't reject them. C, the mother birds can't pick them back up. Or D, they have to be put in a tree to be protected. What do we think? 
why is it fine to put baby birds back into a tree if they've fallen out? Um, this is can I full? Can you please reread it really quick so that I can um think again? Spring is a time of year when many baby birds are hatched. It is easy for a nest filled with young birds to get blown out of a tree. When this happens, it is fine to gently put the nest back in the tree. It is not true that mother birds will reject their babies if humans have touched them. Why is it fine to put fallen baby birds back in a nest? A, birds experts say it is fine if you are gentle. B, the mother birds won't reject them. C, the mother birds can't pick them back up. Or D, they have to be in a tree to be protected. Um, Elijah, do you want to give it a try? D. All right, so I think this one's kind of hard because I feel like all of these are true, but it from the story, there wasn't anything about them being protected from the tree. I totally agree they need to be in a tree to be protected, but that part was not a detail from the story. So, Jessica, why don't you give it a try? Good try, Elijah, though. I agree with you. That one's just not part of the story exactly. Jessica? Uh, B. It is B. The birds won't... Mother birds won't reject them. That is the line that is from the story. I feel like kind of all of these are true, but the one that is from the story is um, the mother birds won't reject them. If you had B, give yourself a tally mark. If you didn't have B, that's okay. Next one, character traits. Dolphins stay close or sit, wait. Dolphins stay close to sick or injured pod mates. They help them breathe by bringing them up to the surface for air. Dolphins have also been known to protect humans from sharks swimming nearby. They have guided trapped ocean animals out to shallow water back to deep water. What is the best way to describe dolphins in the text? A, aggressive. B, responsible. C, helpful. D, persistent. How could we describe dolphins from this text? How could we describe the dolphins? Someone I haven't clicked on. Remember, you might be called on just because your hand's not raised. Don't matter. Brooklyn, what do you think? Brooklyn Smiley, are you here? Brooklyn Smiley? I repeat, Brooklyn Smiley? Mm -hmm. I press the wrong button. D. D. All right, present. So I think they are persistent animals, but I don't think that's the best choice. Would you like to try again or should I call on someone else? You can call on somebody else. All right. Um, Evan, what do you think? Evan, you can type it in the chat because I'm pretty sure your microphone doesn't work. Evan? Which one is the best word to describe a dolphin? I would agree with Brooklyn that they are persistent. Dolphins stay close or si stay close to sick or injured pod mates. They help them breathe by bringing them to the surface for air. Dolphins have also been known for to, to protect humans from sharks swimming nearby. They have guided trapped ocean animals out, to sh out of shallow water back to deep water. What is the best word to describe dolphins in the text? A, aggressive, B, responsible, C, helpful, D, persistent. C, yes, they are very helpful. I think helpful is the best choice. They're also, they also seem responsible and persistent, but I think C, helpful is the best choice. If you have C, give yourself a tally mark. Next is a compare and contrast. Remember, when we're comparing, we're thinking of alike. When we're contrasting, we're thinking of different. Honeybees gather honey and nectar from flowers. Bumblebees are usually very calm. Yellow jackets are wasps that make their nests in the ground. 
one way that wasps are different from bees is that wasps never lose their stingers. They can sting a person many times, which stinks. That, that doesn't sound very nice. What is one difference between bees and wasps? A, wasps are very calm and bees are not. B, wasps do not lose their stingers, but bees do. C, wasps are helpful and bees are not. Or D, bees can sting many times and wasps can sting once. Mrs. Kniffel, yes. <laughs> your screen is a little blurry. I haven't even moved anything. Like... I can't like see the answer choices or anything because it's not like it's it's like blurry. It might be your Wi-Fi. I was gonna say I haven't moved anything till right now. Landon Rebus, Landon Rebus, would you like to give it a try, Landon Rebus? I heard what you said, but I forgot the questions. The question is, what is the difference between bees and wasps? A, wasps are very calm and bees are not. B, wasps do not lose their stingers and bees do. C, wasps are very helpful and bees are not. Or D, bees can sting many times and wasps sting once. Um, I think it's B. It is B. Wasps never lose their stingers, while bees do lose their stingers. Good job. If you had B, give yourself a tally mark. All right, we are on number 17, fact and opinion. Remember, facts are true, opinions are our opinions. Sharks do not have bones. Their skeletons are made up of flexible cartilage. They never run out of teeth. If they lose one, another tooth moves forward from a row in the back. Their skin is rough like spit. Bleh. Their skin is rough like sandpaper. The great white is the most interesting shark. Which sentence from the text is an opinion? They never run out of teeth. B, A, B, sharks do not have bones. C, great white is the most interesting shark. Or D, their skin is rough like sandpaper. Um, uh, Molly, Miss Molly O'Brien, what do you think? Your page is tilted. I can't see the answers. That's why I read them, silly. A, they never run out of teeth. B, sharks do not have bones. C, the great white is the most interesting shark. Or D, their skin is rough like sandpaper. Which one is an opinion? C. Yes. Saying that a great white is the most interesting is definitely an opinion, because what if I think another shark is more interesting, like the hammerhead or something? If you had C, give yourself a tally. Next one is genre. Genre. One day, a hare, which is like the rabbit thing, was bragging about how fast he could run. A very slow tortoise challenged him to a race. The hare was so far ahead, he stopped to take a nap. After he woke up, he raced as fast as he could to the finish line. The tortoise was there waiting. Slow and steady wins the race. How does the reader know this paragraph is a fable? A fable is like a fantasy. It's make-believe, etc., etc. A, the main characters are animals, and this there is a moral. B, everyone knows a hare is fast and a tortoise is slow. C, the tale tells true facts about different animals, or D, the events described in the story are realistic. Mackenzie Couture, what do you think? Miss Mackenzie Couture. It's really blurry. But that's why I read it out loud. So, how does the narrator know this paragraph is a fable or a make-believe, a fairy tale, etc., etc.? A, the main characters are animals and there's a moral to the story. B, everyone knows a hare is fast and a tortoise is slow. C, the text tells true facts about different animals. D, 
the I events think... described in the story are realistic. What do you think? I think it's B. All right, I am going to disagree with you because that doesn't really go along with the fable thing. So someone else, let's give it a try. Um, Jacqueline, you want to give it a try? Jacqueline? I think it's C. All right, I'm going to disagree with you as well. The correct answer is the main characters are animal and there is a moral. It literally says at the end, slow and steady wins the race. So that's like the theme or the moral of the story. And in fables and fairy tales and stuff, there's something the author wants you to learn, which is the moral of the story. So the correct answer is A. So if you had A, give yourself a tally mark. If you didn't have A, that's okay. A fable is something like it's like a fairy tale. The author wants you, you know, there's going to be a theme of some type in it. Next is the inference. Mrs. Kneifel loves inferences. Penny Patterson first met Coco the gorilla in 1971. Coco and Penny formed a close bond. Mrs. Patterson began to teach Coco human sign language to communicate. Coco has now lived with Mrs. Patterson for over 40 years. She is able to talk using more than 1,000 signs. What can the reader infer about Coco? A, Coco can talk just like any human. B, Mrs. Patterson is the best teacher in the world. C, Coco will soon grow tired of learning new signs. D, Coco is smarter than most humans. Oh, wait, sorry, not humans, sorry. Coco is smarter than most animals. Sorry, I did not mean humans. I was wondering, how the heck is a gorilla smarter yeah, than us? that's what I meant. I meant gorillas, or animals. Um, Who have I not called on? Rainier, do you want to give this one a go, Rainier? I think D. It is D. Coco is smarter than most animals. I mean, this gorilla has been able to learn over 1,000 signs of sign language, so he's probably able to communicate very well. The correct answer is D. If you got D, give yourself a tally. Yes, Angelina. Can you, um, do you know how to, um, like, spell your name in sign language? I do, but that's, I, do I, I know a couple of uh, sign language things, but we're almost out of time, so we got to keep going. All right, main idea. These ones are harder. Many insects do clever things in order to survive a cold winter. Some flies hide out in a warm house or barn. There are mosquitoes that hibernate just like bears. Other insects migrate to warmer places in the fall. The monarch butterfly is one of the most famous insect travelers. Which sentence best expresses the main idea? A, watch out for flies hiding in your warm house. B, mosquitoes and bears are alike because they hibernate. C, insects survive a cold winter in different ways. Or D, monarch butterflies fly south for the winter. Which one best describes the overall thing, overall? Um, Kaylee Knight, do you want to give it a try? Kaylee Knight, Kaylee, Kaylee, Kaylee. Kaylee Knight, going once, going twice. All right, Blake. Blake Reed, what do you think? Blake, Blake? C. It is C, good job. The entire thing is about how what insects do in a different weather, good job, or do in the cold weather. Not just about one specific one, it talks about a bunch, and the correct answer is C. Good job, if you had C, give yourself a check. Or tally. Point of view, we're running short on time. Mrs. Knifel needs to talk faster. One day, a wolf was walking in the woods. He was very hungry. Soon, he spied a young girl walking down a path, carrying a basket over one arm. She was wearing a beautiful red cape. He decided she'd make a tasty meal. How can a reader tell that this is a third person point of view? A. The narrator is not one of the main characters. B, someone in the story is telling the story. 
C, there was no main characters in the story. D, the pronouns I and we are used. How can we tell this is third person point of view? Mia? Oh, she just left the meeting. How rude. Um, Presley. Um, uh, C. All right, I am going to disagree. The main character. Oh, I meant A. Sorry. Okay. All right. Um, so the narrator is not one of the main characters, right? There's someone like from the outside looking in, talking about the wolf, talking about Little Red Riding Hood. So the correct answer is A. That's why it's third person point of view, because the narrator is on the outside looking in. If you guess A, give yourself a tally. Mrs. Can I I was going to say A, but um, instead of clicking on you, I accidentally clicked hang up. That's okay. It was A. You were right. Supporting details. In a penguin family... The mother is the one who hunts for food. Penguins like to eat food that are small in size. They enjoy tiny fish, small squid, and the kind of shrimp called krill. Penguins have no teeth, so they don't chew their food. Who is responsible for feeding a penguin family? A, the male. B, the female. C, the youngest penguin. Or D, the penguin's group leader. Cadence, what do you think? Cadence. Um, um, A. I'm going to disagree with you. It is not A. Want to try again? Yeah, B. It is B. It's the female because it says the mother, and the mother would be the female, okay? So the correct answer I, is B. I was thinking how the father warms the baby or keeps it between his legs. Yeah, so it is B. If you guess B, give yourself a tally mark. All right. Let's do word meaning because that one we'll have time for. We're going to only do 23 because we're not going to have time. Chimpanzees are animals that make and use tools. Gorillas are able to learn human sign language and use it to communicate with people. Many scientists consider pigs to be the smartest animal of all. They are friendly and very easy to train. What does the underlined word in the text mean? The underlined word is train. A, a point or aim something. B, a series of railroad cars. C, a piece of uh, material attached to a formal dress, like a wedding train. Or D, to teach skills. What does train mean in this one? Eden? D. It is D. It means to teach skills. All right. We only did 23 of 24. If you would like, you can throw what number you got correct in my chat. I really appreciate so many of you guys raising your hands, participating. You guys really did super good. I really appreciate it. Once again, there's going to be no homework because Mrs. Kneifel is so kind. I hope you all have a lovely Thanksgiving break. I hope you guys all stay safe. My class, I'll see you at one o'clock. And remember, you will be getting an email if you have any later missing assignments. Have a great math class. You Let's too, and have a good break. See you guys at one o'clock if you're in my room. Bye. Bye, if you're in my class, I'll see you at one o'clock. Bye. Bye-bye.